Polls have closed in the Czech Republic after two days of voting in national elections. Prime Minister Andrei Babich looks likely to hold on to power despite a scandal-ridden first term. All polls favor his centrist party to take at least 25 percent of the vote, but it's not clear if the Eurosceptic prime minister will be able to form a new coalition government. Babich is alleged to have put millions of dollars into shell companies to buy properties in France. He has denied any wrongdoing. I'm joined now by journalist Ian Willoughby. He's with Prague, Radio Prague International, rather. Ian, thanks for joining us. The polls have now closed. What kind of result are you expecting? Well, as you said, Mr. Babish has been consistently ahead in the polls for some time, so he is very likely to come first. Then the question is, what happens next? He will likely need to form some kind of coalition, so a lot of attention will turn to which of the smaller parties in the Czech Republic have reached the 5% threshold to get into the lower house and therefore will become potential election or rather coalition partners. But a big issue here is the health state of the president, Milos Zeman, because he's a close ally of uh, Prime Minister Babish, it's not impossible that Zeman could task Babish with forming a new government. And even if he fails to win a vote of confidence in the lower house, Zeman could keep him there as Prime Minister for a long period of time. So a lot will depend on Zeman's health. There are rumors that he's unwell. If he were incapacitated, that could have a big influence on the next Czech government. We talked about the potential coalitions that the prime minister um, could possibly be making, and one of those parties would be the far-right party that wants to take the Czech Republic out of the European Union. Were voters concerned about this when they went to the polls? Well, liberal voters certainly are concerned about this issue. The Czech Republic joined the EU in 2004, and many voters do want to remain in the European Union. But at the same time, there is also quite widespread anti-EU sentiment in this country. But it is also very interesting, if Mr. Babish would enter a coalition with his party, the far-right SPD, and accede to their condition for entering coalition, which would be a vote on so-called Chexit, the Czech Republic leaving the European Union. And uh, in the past, Mr. Babish said he wouldn't enter a government with this party who are aligned with the likes of the National Front in France. But in recent times, he himself has been using quite strong anti-EU, anti-migrant rhetoric, similar to this party, the SPD, in a way trying to hoover up their votes just leading into this election. Ian, we have just about a minute left. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about the two opposition blocs. They said they're going to work together to oust the prime minister. Could they realistically govern together, though? Well, in total, that will be five parties. There are two blocs, one of three parties, one of two. And, uh, yeah, they are all very strongly anti-Babish. But the question is, yes, could they possibly work together, especially over a longer period of time when they have different uh, policies in many different areas? But also, I should say that they may not get the required votes together, the five parties, to uh, form a government. Also, the president, Zeman, has said that he will not respect a coalition that comes first. He says he will task the leader of the single biggest party in these elections with forming a government. And that would be clearly Andrei Babish of Anno. Zeman has said that he regards these coalitions, these electoral coalitions, as a fraud on voters and as not legitimate. So the chances of them actually entering power, I would say, are not so high. Journalist Ian Willoughby, thanks for walking us through that, Ian. Appreciate it.